So today we wanted to take a little time to talk about steam nozzles and why they're so important when using a steamer on a roof. There's more to the nozzle than meets the eye. What appears to be a plain pipe nipple here is a well-engineered device. Inside the nozzle there's many features that help direct the steam in the right way to concentrate the heat to remove the ice from your roof. Today I've got Jimmy Welch, our VP of Engineering here. He's been in the industry for close to 42 years, is that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been the head of engineering for uh, Mighty M, General Pump, and many other companies and has more experience than any other person I've met. Jimmy, I'll turn it over to you to talk about what makes the steam nozzle special. Okay, our steam nozzles we use for uh, uh, steam cleaners uh, were basically designed in the 1940s and the first purpose when we designed the nozzles were for, was for dissolving grease, actually removing grease, not taking grease from one area and moving it to another area but actually dissolving the grease. So the nozzle was designed, this blue is representing the water flow or the steam flow and then this black is the nozzle's assembly. So we first have the primary orifice which is sized based upon the flow and the pressure of the machine that you're using. Then we have our first, second, and third steam expansion chambers. If we just had this orifice and we cut the nozzle here, it would be just like a zero degree nozzle from a high pressure. But by adding these chambers in here, we can take that and get to about approximately three quarter of an inch diameter of steam, okay? And that steam can be used, like I say in the beginning, to dissolve a grease, completely dissolve it. We can also dissolve ice, okay, and cut ice, okay. But we're cutting ice with temperature, not with pressure impact. So it's temperature impact, okay. High pressure nozzles came along when we started building the pressure up in the system. Uh, early days we were at 500 psi, now we're you know, up to 90,000 psi with nozzles. But these nozzles that we use mainly in pressure washer are designed for 5,000 psi. So a high pressure nozzle is strictly designed for impact. Because there, for this we're going to take and remove a uh, film, let's say a road film, let's say a, a paint surface. We're wanting to remove that. That's usually the main case and remove uh, algae, bacteria, anything like that. So the nozzle is designed much different the water flow still comes in and you will have what we call a primary orifice and if it was just a zero degree it would just be a straight stream out. But we also have the fan spray here. So with that, when you start building up the temperature in the machine and you get to 220, around 220 degrees, maybe 225, the fan is still pretty consistent, straight cut like a chisel type. But when the temperature increases above that, and you get in around a 250, the nozzle becomes fat, it also becomes shorter, condensed. So you're not getting the, as much impact at that temperature, but it's also not doing a lot of cutting action, okay? So we're losing some, some impact, but not enough, okay? When you look at the, that on an asphalt shingle, this is a representation of the sand gravel that's on, on the shingle. This is what a steam nozzle will do, cover a larger area, you can then see this, and this will actually uh, remove the material from the surface if you get too close or the pressure gets too high. Normally on a roof at an angle, when you're wanting to do, do it, you're going to take the steam and you're going to get a spray like this and you want to cut for a long distance, okay? So we're going to take the steam to cut off the ice that's formed from the roof shingle assemblies. Now let's talk a little bit about what happens when we're using these nozzles in the cold weather and how we quickly lose heat. We've got some thermal images that will appear in this video that kind of cover some of that too. But uh, in this nozzle, we've concentrated, we're mixing the vapor, the energy, and everything else and making this nice, we'll just call it a steam cloud that can be concentrated and directed in a controlled way through a longer distance, 20, 24 inches, we've set over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And in this design, um, it quickly cools. The steam leaves on the side, steam's not visible, just water vapor condensation is. Do you want to explain vortexing a little bit, Jimmy, and what happens there? Yeah, uh, vortex occurs when the water leaves the nozzle and it forms little air pockets around because uh, uh, we have the ambient air temperature and the water temperature of the uh, fluid leaving the nozzle. So you get vortexes in here. It's really noticeable with our rotating nozzles. You can really see the vortexes, but that's more of a cyclonic vortex because we're rotating the nozzle. 
Uh, so then that, that affects the nozzle's performance at the temperature. So ambient air and water temperature, the fluid temperature, both affect the uh, quality of the spray coming out of the nozzle. And that will quickly let you lose heat. As you can see, this type of nozzle, even when it's starting at the same 275, 285 degrees, has no temperature over 100 degrees left after as, as little as 4 to 6 inches, uh, leaving, leaving very little effective cutting power a distance through ice. This type of nozzle can cut a block of ice in half fast, but with our Arctic steamer we're not interested in that. We're interested in having a homeowner have a good experience with a roof that lasts as long as it should, as well as a quick, safe, effective removal of that ice dam to protect their interior. If we wanted to win a block cutting contest, we pick this nozzle every time because it can make a thin path with low visibility. But if we want to go on a homeowner's roof or recommend something, even though we sell thousands of these a year, we would never sell one to use on an asphalt shingle. And the reason is because it damages the shingle, it removes the roofing material. And uh, so let's say a 30 year roof life is decreased to let's say uh, 15, half the life in some cases. That's a great point. What's happening is, as uh, anything, wind, rain, over time, the granules slowly get removed from the roof as the roof ages. With this nozzle, it's very similar to what, what rain, wind and rain might do. With these nozzles, you dramatically remove granules, and those areas where there's been spray, UV will begin to work on those over the next year, two, three, five years, far more than it should, and that edge of that roof, while it appears good from the ground the next year when it's inspected, could fail prematurely, could fail in a few years, could fail ten years prematurely. All depends on how close that nozzle got and what happened.